On the Sweetsway Estate here in the London Borough of Barnet, but I'm going to be entering a very different world. It's the People's Republic of Sweetstopia, an independent microstate. I've forgotten to bring my passport, so I don't know if I'm going to get in. Daniel. Tell me about Sweetstopia. It's been hanging in the air for a while. We thought first with the families when we came to support the families that the, the next um, level from the housing issues would be about sustainability and autonomy, how to reclaim your, your whole community as, as, as a self-governing little unit, because we're always thinking in uh, networks as activist types. Thank God the families are still here. Some of them, most of them got rehoused, but some of them are still here. And we got some help from the squatting communities who, who came in and rebuilt these houses that the contractors smashed up. So we've been thinking about how to claim independence, how to, how to form our own community. And finally, after losing all the court battles, we had a little window for opportunity to, to do it. And we did. So it's, a, it's kind of a game, but it's, it's a very serious game. So we, this is not a joke, even if it sounds like it. You can see the concrete walls and... and uh, the barricades so we're not joking but this is a type of a game to set up our own country it's an open source uh, independent state so anyone who wants to play with us are welcome to to join and to try it anywhere else basically so it's Topia passport look at that yeah, love rules without rules that's from thomas moore who created utopia that's our motto and this is an owl a bohemian um, symbol of inspiration and this is the letter S from the Utopian alphabet by Thomas More. So if you make your own passport, you have to make your own passport basically because otherwise it's not valid. You have to draw your own picture otherwise we can't accept it sadly. It's only official with the two stamps. <laughs> it's just we really don't want to be part of the, the monstrosity that comes from Westminster or Westminster. And I think if everyone starts claiming independence, wherever they are, Westminster would be just a little island on its own, so they would have to really sort out their things out. This is the Sweetstopia allotment, really. This is amazing. Steph and Vegas are going to talk me through their permaculture garden. What are you up to, Vegas? What's going on here? Well, I'm making a sandwich right now, and I'm just picking some salad to go with my sandwich. These are cucumbers, lettuce, uh, more cucumbers, courgette, beans, all spinach, and then more courgettes and things. More spinach. I've just planted all of this in actually, just before you got here. We've got courgettes, cabbages, we've got lots more lettuce here, and um, chard and beetroots. So we've used eggshells there. There's another example of if you've got no money and you want to get some pots, reuse your eggshells. Yeah, any, everything is about reusing and not keep buying new stuff with permaculture. It's about reusing what we already have, all the waste that's coming from the consumer society. We can reuse things and not have to keep buying new. Lavender, for, for your room, look. Lavender, hold up. Thank you, you very you much. You must have the rest of that, Yeah, I'll make lavender tea with it. Yeah, there's Thank a bit you. of truth in there, though. Thank you. Oh. You're right, mate. <laughs> so, are you gardening as well? You're burning some lavender over there? Yeah, just yeah, to yeah. make it smell nice. I'm make the fire. I'm trying to see what, what, what difference we make if you burn lavender in the fire, but it doesn't make any difference. It does. It, it smells, smells really, really nice. good. Can you smell it now? Oh, yeah, yeah really strong. Oh, I can't smell it because I've been picking it, that's why. <laughs> the first thing you smell when you enter Sweet Sophia, you're greeted by the amazing aroma of lavender. So, Vegas has been making these, um, these walls where she's stapled in fabric, so we just don't have a bit many big pots, and then put the plants in the top. Um, she's been making those last few days with just old fabric that we've skipped and old uh, pallets that we've skipped. And uh, none of this stuff we've pretty much paid for apart from the collection of organic seeds that I had and a lot of it's been given to us and some seeds that we already had but or a lot of this stuff we've we've skipped it. We've made out of an old ladder um, flower pots and we've got rosemary growing there as well and a bit of lavender as well there. Tyres were left in the garages 
So we were going to build vegetable beds, but we thought we'll reuse the tyres and fill them up so we have more mass to grow bigger plants and bigger vegetables. How many people lived here? So we just had another 15 people in yesterday, but I think we had just over over 20 before that, maybe a little bit more up and down. Some people were coming and going, so the level, the numbers have been up and down, really. This is meant to be entertaining, but it's also a firm uh, stance, and it's it's proper creative resistance here up in Barnet. And we're in London, so this is the best place to, to pump ideas out and inspire other people. So we, we taught our friends if they wanted to play this game, and uh, one of our friends designed the flag. So you can see it's up here, and it's also flying up there. And this stands for Bohemianism. Uh, the red and black is anarchy. The red separately is our blood and our sweat that we put into these houses to bring them back to a living standard. And the green is uh, liberty and, and Mother Earth. So this project is about housing, about sustainability, to control your, your own food sources, and uh, also about autonomy, trying to decide together that what we, we've been experiencing and experimenting with the um, occupied guys uh, down at Parliament, and also in Occupy London. We, we've exper experimented with uh, communal uh, decision-making, consensus-based uh, collective decision-making processes. So this is kind of an anarchic little society, and it's it's wonderful. So I hear there was this kitchen was in a very bad state, and squatting technology brought us this, like from the main uh, pipe, the main you can have like a garden hose, normal garden hose that goes up to the toilet and brings the water to the sink. There was no sink as well, so th this was recovered. We haven't spent any money on, on these houses. The squatters just spread out and found stuff, and uh, some people bought a few bits and bobs. But it's all creativity and, and, and passion, basically. The yeah. This is how we started um, you know, drafting what Streetopia should be about. We just wanted to have like a sovereign, independent, little community and of course we are sweet sway and we are kind of utopian bohemians and this this is the draft so this, this is how we started working out what what we're all about that le led to having a flag and having uh, potato stamps i've got some first experiments here so as you can see it's this technology is biodegradable <laughs> this is a letter s from the ut utopian alphabet by thomas moore who created Utopia, invented Utopia. I don't know how he did it in the 15th century, but this now in a 21st century urban environment where you can grow your own food, you, you make it a bit greener, cleaner, and, and, and you know it's a social experiment as well. So we're trying to find a way to, to build our own Utopia. And this is a place where we can actually experiment right now because of the circumstances. We still have the families uh, resisting over there and, and building their show home. But yeah, we're kind of strange visionary people, so we like to go all the way. And don't just talk about housing, but, but about sustainability, as you can see, autonomy, how to make the resistance creative so it, it looks very innocent but also very radical at the same time. Nothing that the uh, establishment would ex expect from people like throwing burning babies at them or something. We, we're going to fight with creativity and with morals and it's a bit different now. And of course with families and uh, yeah, children, mothers, little bunny rabbits, little doggies. She's our president by the way. And yeah, she beat Russell Brand to the... What, what's, what's her name? Doggy. Doggy. <laughs> president Doggy. Uh, yes. When I finish filming Doggy I'll give you a belly rub, I swear. Yeah, we only that. have a couple of rules here. Please don't feed the unicorns and no di no knitting after dark. It's really important. Yeah, it's a really important. Is that because it's dangerous to knit after dark? It's just yeah. a rule, you know. Just a rule. We never seen anyone try. It just so encourages the knitters. It. We just don't want to encourage them at night time. Yeah, could be very dangerous. What, what are you painting here? Uh, Viva Sweet Stopia, Love Resistance, On the One Sharing is Caring, just some messages. The only hierarchy we have is, is the cause itself, the, the project itself, that's, that's the boss and everyone else 
serve the project. So how do you make decisions? Collectively, if you have to make decisions. But mm. if people know what the project is, they can make their own decisions, of course, if they don't mm. cross someone else's path in the making. So, we've so got now we're in a pyramid. Right. <laughs> Pyramids are very powerful. Close your eyes and go double. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you going, Steph? Uh, uh, all the other dimensions of Sweet Stopia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is all. Did you pick thing. that? Is that stuff you picked? It's broccoli leaves. I was going to make a smoothie. Yeah, you can steam it and make a green juice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we've got molasses now that we found to sweeten it. Welcome to my home. We skipped a jacuzzi. We don't have a working bath or shower in this house. We have to use communal. We've got a toilet and a sink, which the boys got working again, basically, before I moved in here. But we're going to try. We've got a plumber on site now. So we're going to try and get this jacuzzi that we've skipped in the bathroom and working. So I've made this space for like a yoga or meditation chill out space because it all got a bit oppressive when we had to put our barricades in. So I wanted there to be a space for people to be able to come and relax and you know, get away from anything if they want to. And then I did, my friends did this wall, you choose the life you create. And another friend did this wall, and then I did the wall behind you. Love, you are not a robot. We're very lucky here that we've got a lot of trees around us. And I'm thinking that if this place does get redeveloped, I'm slightly worried that a lot of these very old trees will go with it as well. So, yeah. What type of trees are they? They are maple trees. We are surrounded by maple trees, so we have a harvest of maple syrup in March. We also have two massive uh, walnut trees out the back as well, which you could get a harvest near the end of the summer of walnuts. So we have a source of food all around us. <laughs> a source of sugar and a source of nuts, the protein. Yeah. What's the principle of permaculture <laughs> again, you were saying? We've got landfills all over the world, and they're not going to get reduced any quicker by us keep on piling stuff into them. With permaculture, it means permaculture and there's zero waste. So it's coming to a place and working our ways psychologically to a place where we can stop over consuming. And most of the things that we're throwing away can be either biodegradable, put in a compost. So things like hair and nails, you can put in compost, your own hair and nails, you don't have to throw them in a bin. And, and also, we all thought that recycling was great years ago, but actually recycling uses a lot of energy as well. So if we can come to a point where we're even reducing that, what we're doing and we're using those things, otherwise just don't buy them. Stop buying things that you, you know, that, that's, that's, the, that's where we want to, a place we want to sort of get to. I've spent no money here except the cost of what I've spent on buying my organic seeds in the past. Everything, everything is recycled. And half of my wardrobe now is clothes that I've received for free and trainers and things like this. Basically, we found Shiva in a, in a charity shop skipped bin. And so it's inspired by our skipped Shiva, <laughs> which is the lucky bin that we keep going back to and finding lucky things. <laughs> Singing bowl is an ancient Tibetan tool that they use for meditation. And it just, the sound facilitates um, the meditation, it helps you to stay calm and sort of get into a calm mood. So I'll probably get a friend, me and a friend of mine to do like facilitate and talk people through a meditation and then, and then maybe add some sound in just to help to, to add to the mood basically. And if anyone has any big gongs they'd like to bring in my front room and join us, we're, you're very, very welcome. <laughs> and we can give everyone a big sound bath. How, how long do you think you'll be able to stay? I don't really think about that sort of stuff. If, if you're doing this, what we're doing, you, you plan for the next day and for the next week, usually. But um, you never know. You know, we, we're trying always to, to go all the way, but if the forces of evil drive us out and we have to go somewhere else, 
will continue somewhere else. And there's generations of activism present, as you can see. <laughs> and how can people help you? Well, by playing with us. I mean, we need playmates. We need people who want to experiment, uh, creating a country that they would love to live in. They can come here and do it here. They can share uh, what we post online. They can try to do something similar themselves, wherever they are. But anytime anyone wants to get involved, they can visit us here. Uh, there's a page called Sweetstopia on Facebook. I just launched it like about a week ago or two weeks ago. But it's, it's getting, getting somewhere now. I think we're about 300 people uh, in likes and about 10,000 people we managed to reach so far with it. And if they can uh, you know, help us defend this little utopia and uh, help the families who've been violently kicked out of here come back and, and reclaim their, their homes and sort out what, who this land actually belongs to because it's been kind of stolen off the, the Ministry of Defense. Probably they told you on the other side, the, the moms, that it's been like a, a thousand years uh, lease for zero pounds. And they sold each house for like three, four hundred pounds in 96. So it's not really clear if it was, you know, a normal purchase or how, how Bennington Homes um, managed to get the land of the military. We're also waiting for military families to show up and be angry. <laughs> Hey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>